Recently I've been trying to expand my horizons and play Sega games I missed out on. I, like most people, had my start with the company through Sonic, but growing up I did play their other IPs through Genesis collections. Golden Axe, Kid Chameleon, Alice Kid, and Rystar. I enjoyed a lot of them, but don't really revisit any of them nowadays besides Rystar my video reviewing it a while back. Later on, I would go on to experience their other greats like Jet Set Radio and years later play its sequel. But one I consistently missed out on even after getting a free Steam code for it by signing up for the second newsletter in 2020 was Nights in the Dreams. I've always heard about Knights, even seen gameplay of the original game a few times, but it never captivated me enough to want to give it a try. Knights, Steam, Pinball, and Sonic Adventure be damned. I don't know, nothing I saw about Knights made me want to play it immediately, but after finally playing and beating it today... Well, uh... What the hell is that? Okay, I'm bouncing now? Oh, uh, I guess I'm fat? What the hell are these things? What's this sinister music I'm hearing? Oh god, this clock is chasing me! My initial impression after clearing the game was... Mix. I liked some things about the game, like the art style and the graphics. The gameplay was fun and satisfying, but I was consistently getting mediocre to bad rankings, and I didn't understand why. I hated my encounters with some of the bosses, like this card dude and this firework cat. I couldn't figure out if I was properly damaging some of these guys at first, and with the first boss I fought, I didn't even know if I was hurting him until I noticed his body was getting shorter. When I cleared the final boss, I didn't know what to think of what I just played. I quickly realized that this is one of those games you really gotta stick with and replay to understand the inner workings of. The way Knights works is that in every level you will get these colorful spears taken from you by these monsters, and after walking to this pod in the middle you take control of Knights and he flies around on a set 2.5D path. You're tasked with collecting these blue orbs so that you can destroy these pods so you can collect a spear and then take it back to the start of the level. The game will then grade you and this is where I'm unsure of things. Just to add up, I came to these conclusions without me researching how the grading system works, but I believe you get a higher letter grade based on how many points you accumulated within the two minutes they give you. You see, you don't have to immediately use the orbs to break the pods once you have enough. You can fly past it and do another lap around the level if you so choose. Doing this will allow you to get more points. The same can be done if you already have an orb in your possession, you don't have to drop it off immediately and get graded. I believe holding onto it gives you some score bonuses, so that's often what I did after figuring that out. Knights is definitely a score attack game rather than a speed game, and while I don't usually get much out of high score based games, I won't lie, after figuring out how things work, I was getting some enjoyment out of seeing how many points I could rack up through the rings and touching shit. There's even some little bonus things you can touch that gives you extra points for getting enough links while holding this egg or basket, and another method by making different sized loops with a trail you leave behind. Knights themselves controls like a dream during normal gameplay, and even the more gimmicky sections don't control terrible, they're often fun and offer slightly different gameplay to change things up a bit. I guess I'll mention this game's plot. I usually cover the story first, but I'll be real, what's here I don't really have much to talk about. The game stars two characters, Claris and Elliot. Claris wants to become a singer and perform, but has stage fright, and Elliot just wants to prove that he has better handles than this douchebag. Both of their fears or problems manifest in their dreams, where I'm guessing Knights help both of them overcome them so that when they wake up they can succeed in whatever they want to do. I'm not sure how smashing an obese woman through walls allows you to snap ankles on a basketball court, but I digress. I don't have much to say about either of these characters as who you pick changes nothing with the opening and ending of the story. You still play as knights in both, so you just go through different levels. You can also freely select which level you want to play in the menu, so it's not like I prefer playing as one character over the other. However, after beating both campaigns though, you unlock Christmas Knights, which is a nice bonus mode where you play through a Christmas version of the first level in Clarissa's story. The plot here is that Elliot and Claris want to restore the star on top of the Christmas tree in their hometown. Not much to say here either because it's only one level and you play it twice and in the end it was all just a dream anyway. Not a very eventful story but I appreciate them going the extra mile to have something here even if it's not the focus of the game. Nines has a very interesting set of mechanics after spending time with that I really enjoyed and recommend. I know this was a pretty short one, but I wanted an excuse to finally play this game. I never hear much about the sequel Night's Journey of Dreams, but now I'm interested in giving that a try. One day. Coincidentally, this is the second Sega video in a row, but it won't be the last. Not even close. As over the next batch of videos, I'm finally going over the Sonic series. Or at least the first half of them. Throughout the summer, I will start reviewing Sonic games starting with Sonic 1 and ending at what I deem the halfway mark in that series is Sonic 06. I'll be keeping it the mainline only, but I'll definitely talk about the spin-offs another time. This is definitely going to be my biggest undertaking so far on this channel, but I feel ready for it. Next time, I'll be talking about Sonic 1. See you then.